Library for the Competitors Conference hosted by Gary Vanerchuk. I'm going to bring you in, show you along. Hope you enjoy. My name is Mike Schulte. I've actually had the pleasure of meeting you in Nolita previously. Um, I run a, I'm a real estate broker in New York City. I run a team of six. I put out content, I want to say seven days a week, but if I'm honest to myself, I fuck up every now and then and miss a day, uh, across 10 different platforms, video, audio, and text. Um, I'm pot committed to doing this long term. I'm working on collaborating more and more with different people across different fields. Um, one of your followers, Sherman on in Wisconsin, actually said hello and thank you for everything that you've done. So my, my question is, is as businesses continue to change, and I've already seen the technology start to eat people alive in real estate, yes. if you were playing in this business, yes. where would you focus? First of all, I hear a lot of good stuff, so I'm pumped about that. I mean, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> all technology is going to do is eat up <clears throat> over the course of the next 50 years the bottom 80%. So, all right, I, so I understand that, and they suck a, anyway, so I don't give a, a fuck about them. Like, so I'm trying to eat, like, some of the top 5%'s lunch, because I don't, I don't need to be number one. I don't need to be the... You're only in the branding game. Mm-hmm. You have nothing to do. Top 5%? You're not in technology business. You're in the branding business, brother. Okay. The end. But then beyond... You don't have to eat anything mm -hmm. if you're not a brand. Right. <laughs> so beyond the continuous... Nothing. Head down, just keep on. Underpriced attention. Okay. Look at my last 10 years. Mm -hmm. When I was right about YouTube and Twitter in 2006, 7, 8, for all the tech nerds in here, it worked. When I was a little bit busy building up the beginning of VaynerMedia in 2011, 12, 13, quiet. A whole lot less content out there. About, you know, go find my 2011, 12, 13, 14 videos. Right? When I felt I was ready, because I had this foundation down for VaynerMedia, I was patient. I built the foundation of a $400 million valuation business, right? Then I hired DRock on his fourth request or third. Or DRock, how many times? Four. Fourth. <laughs> so, so that that's actually my follow-up right? question. So, 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 uh, I'll give. I just want to make sure. Yeah, you yeah. And I'll let you do it. Yeah. Underpriced attention, guys. I'm not talking about audio for my health. Start a fucking podcast. So I, I'm at the point where I'm doing literally everything on my own. The content from content creation to actually editing to distribution to all the networks. Should, right? right. Because honestly, I'm not at a point where... You can afford the team. I, I, I'm not at a point... I'm probably at a point where I can just afford a D-Rock. Maybe not D-Rock, but like... in rocks eight bucks an hour. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in your experience, because you've yeah. definitely accelerated significantly over the How last... Many follow you on Instagram? 1,400? You should ask for somebody to be an intern and see what happens. Okay. I'm looking for a content intern. I will not pay you for six months, but I will for the rest of my life come through for you if I can help you the end. Either somebody believes in you or not. <clears throat> Dope. Thank you. You got it. It's interesting. One of them said something really cool to me, really stuck, and it's been sitting in my mind for the last six months. He's like, you know what's cool about what's going on with you? I'm like, what? He's like, people aren't coming up to you because you can throw a ball fast or because you're super hot. People are coming up to you because you're bringing them value. You're like helping them. It's cool. So value. You start making videos on how to fix your car by yourself because you change one little starter instead of bringing it in somewhere and wasting three hours and letting them make a real margin. 
you're going to find a very thing, funny thing start happening. I'm a big fan of giving away the secrets if you're in the service business as a way to build trust and brand to get everything else. There's, got it? Yeah. yeah like make I'll, a little less or make more. Just make it something that doesn't take up your brain right, right. and energy so that you're fucking, the, the bigger issue now is that you were so bored for eight hours that it's tough to restart, not that you're out of energy. Right. I mean it, that's the answer. Yeah. It's not so easy to execute. Right, because it most has to do with finances. Right? I, I get I, it, I get it, especially when debt is compounding with that interest, like, this is why I'm just, I really, you know. And I hate making excuses. Dude, it's, I, don't, yeah, I can tell, yeah. it's not an excuse, it's a fundamental issue that I'm trying to put a lot of pressure on as one person and hope it builds momentum. The thought of going to college and, and collecting eight, six figures of debt in the way what college does for you in return in today's world is wrong. It's not, there's just nothing else to say. It's fundamentally wrong, especially if it's not a layup to, to six figure job. Listen, you wanna go and you're gonna be a consultant at Bain and McKinsey or Goldman Sachs because it's Harvard and Stanford, you can sell me a little bit. But that's a small percentage. And if you're an entrepreneur, the fuck? <laughs> I mean, Babson's a great entrepreneurial school, but it's the minor leagues to real life entrepreneurship. So, my answer is simple, just to like round this out. Life's about choices. Right? And like they're hard. And it's about patience. What I'm telling you to do is probably like a good solid seven year mapping game plan. And for you, you're like, fuck me, 30, like, and like it's not feeling good to be 28 at my mom's house. What the fuck is Gary talking about, 35? Here's what I'm talking about life is long. No, I appreciate it. You know, when I think about the financial shit that building this company for my dad meant to me. Let me just, one more time for all your friends that say don't listen to Gary, his dad gave it to him. Let me give you the rebuttal <laughs> real quick. This business was a $4 million business. I came into it, I worked every hour. I never made $100,000 a year. I built my dad this business. I own 0% of this business. I own 50% of the property it sits on, but I own 0% of this business. I left this business in 2009, but really 11 which means I was 34 years old, right? I owned 0% of this business, and the property that this is on is still underwater from its mortgage, which means I had zero value to my life. I started VaynerMedia. I got somebody to give us an $80,000 contract on a Gillette program. I gave my brother 50% of the business that I started with him when he was a 22-year-old kid and had no leverage. Yeah, I'm real lucky. You got it. So I I come up from a family of dentists. Yes. And uh, similar to your situation, um, I mean I was in the tech space and my tech startup kind of failed because of the tech and I'm not a technical person. Yep. But I use those things that I learned from uh, you know the tech space and marketing for my family's dental office. Yes. But my father has like a very like Russian. European way of managing people. I've heard of it. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and similar to you, I, I like to like invest in people and I know you. So giving I know. giving time to people. I know. And it's difficult to like trying to explain to my father the value of humans. Yeah, when he's <laughs> like, they should be working for me, not I work for them. Listen, your dad and my dad grew up in a system where communism was really framed and fucked with the way they think about other people. They lived in a place where they watched every single employee of every single organization steal from the organization because the entire country was run on the black market and you couldn't survive if you didn't steal. And then compounded, I don't know your family story, but compounded for my family story, you know, if you were Jewish, you were in big trouble because you get to go to jail when you get caught, right? And so, I used to really be mad at my dad with the way he would handle things. Now I've become disproportionately empathetic to what he grew up with. You're not gonna, you're not gonna convince him. It's too deep. 
But how did you, did you change the environment? The yeah, I changed it because I gained control because I built a huge business. Your dad will let you treat people the way you want to treat them if you go walk in there and say, Dad, step away for a year, let me triple your business, and let me kick you the cash. Has Sasha softened to people since you've been successful? 100,000%. My dad's an awesome dude. He just has serious trust issues, as does every Soviet Russian that lived the first 20 years in that country. You know who you need to go speak to? People that are minorities, if you want to understand Russian people. Like, it's just, you know, like, super easy for a white guy to walk around America and be like, what? They don't get it. <laughs> they don't get it. They don't get it. Listen, the, you know, listen, I had two major things go for me. Two great things happened for me. One, I was born in a Soviet Jewish household where, like, it was real fucking bad. And, like, like I, so, you know, five of my six best friends from college were African American. They come over for college. My dad comes down one day. We're having breakfast. My dad's a character. He doesn't even know these dudes yet. He looks at him and he goes, you think it's tough being black in America? He goes, try to be a Jew in Russia. I'm like, fucking dad. <laughs> he goes, you guys get pulled over and kind of arrested? We get put in jail for 11 years in Siberia. <laughs> and my friends are like, fuck. <laughs> you know? So, he, like, 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 what we're going through, like, you know, like, people don't get it. Like, we lack empathy. We look at, we're fucking... It pisses me off so much. I had two great things for me. One, that I grew up in that household. Two, that all my friends were black and I was in 90% black college. And the first six times we drove to the mall, we got pulled over four times. So go live that. Go, to, go, go help, you know, go, go to a retirement home. Bro, go, you know what, 28, 35, go, go volunteer at a retirement home for one day. You're gonna see real regret, and you're gonna see how long life really is, and it will help you. You wanna understand what the fuck's going on? Go get some friends that don't look like you, and go spend time with them in their environment. I remember. you should ask the people that come to your bar every day for next month. Yep. How did I handle stealing $400,000 from us? Uh, definitely much more casually than I did. <laughs> and how do I handle every bad situation every single time? It's always big picture, right, at the end of the day. So that's just an individual situation, looking forward to big picture. It is a big deal, but it's not. So learning from the experience, learning from the mistake, and then figuring out how to prevent it going forward is the whole key to everything. Thank you, Brandon. Andy? Get up. <laughs> like, like, like how, do, how do I handle all the bad stuff? Just don't focus on it. Like it doesn't even happen. And that's the difference between building big businesses and building tiny little things that pay your bills. You've got, to, and by the way, psychiatrist, partner, this moment. I don't care how you figure it out. I promise you on the health of my children, if you don't, you're going nowhere. This is not a, this is not a nice to have. This isn't like some little like, let's be better at Facebook. This is fundamental. Principle is the disaster of entrepreneurship. The disaster. The utter cancer of your business. A hundred percent. And by the way, it's not something, I, my dad has not been able to let it go. I, I'm not sure you're gonna ever be able to change, but I know that you'll never be able to change unless you drastically attack it. Not, okay, let me try this week. You'll fail. You'll hold your breath. And then you'll breathe. You know what I mean? You need to go fucking hard at this. Good, good luck. You're welcome. Jets hat. Go ahead. Yep. You mean be 100% focused on the end consumer and positivity and optimism and offense? 
Yeah, yeah, it works out. But the principle, you got the fact that it's a principle. When you make the principle about everybody but yourself, it's not called principle. It, it's called your thesis, your religion, your, you know, your North Star. Thing I want to leave you with. I was having a conversation with Sasha Vaynerchuk, which is Gary's dad, and he was telling me about when he first came to America and he was walking on Queens Boulevard and he was looking up at Alexander's and he told his friends, one day I'm going to build something as big as that. And they laughed. And then uh, he did it. Look at this building behind me. This is what the American dream is. Go out there, execute, day in, day out, and you'll win. You will. Always be willing to do what your competition isn't and work harder than everybody else combined.